Hello everyone and welcome to our channel. My name is Raquel Guerra and today I'm going to present you the case concerning Amadou Sadio Diallo by the International Court of Justice. The Diallo case represents the apogee of human rights protection at the ICJ, for the first time established in violation of human rights treaties. The ICJ for the first time moved from diplomatic protection in the interstate to intra-state dimension. It arose in a dispute involved Amadou Diallo, the Republic of Guinea, whose country, Mr. Diallo, was a national, and the Democratic Republic of Congo, country whose Mr. Diallo has been resident for more than 30 years. This decision turned on the questions of whether the Congo had violated Mr. Diallo's human rights and his rights as a shareholder and manager in two corporations he owned in the Congo. Facts. In December 1998, the Republic of Guinea instituted legal proceedings against the Democratic Republic of Congo, claiming by way of diplomatic protection that the Congo had violated various international rights of its national, Amadou Diallo, a businessman who had been a resident in the Congo since 1967. In the Congo, Mr. Diallo successfully established two companies, African Zaire and African Container Zaire, both private limited liability companies incorporated under Congolese law. Mr. Diallo acting as manager of both companies. In the eighth, both companies were owed large sums of money by the Congolese public institution and other companies operating the Congo. All attempts by Mr. Diallo and his companies to sue and recover the obligations were undermined by Congolese authorities who stayed proceeding from, for the enforcement of judgment. After being arrested and imprisoned, Mr. Diallo was expelled from the Congo in 1995. The authorization ministerial order, however, was mistakenly labeled as a refusal to entry rather than as a formal expulsion. According to Congolese legislation, contrary to a formal expulsion, a refusal of entry had no appeal. Submissions of the parties. E. The complaint concerns Mr. Diallo's alleged unlawful detention, humiliation, and degradation during his time, and his expulsion and subsequent denial of justice, as well as the deprivation of his and his company's property rights. E. Exercise for its action, diplomatic protection, on behalf of Mr. Diallo under, under three different Headings, seeking to protect Mr. Diallo as individual being a victim of arrest, exposure, and ill treatment, as a shareholder defending his direct rights in Africa, Zaire, and African Container Zaire, and by substitution, as a shareholder and manager defending the rights of those two companies, being elected. That Mr. Diallo's exposure was the final act in the course of actions implemented by the Congo in order to prevent Mr. Diallo from recovering the debt owed to of his two companies. As to the merits, Vini claims the full restitution of the damage suffered by Mr. Diallo and by the Republic of Guinea, the person of Mr. Diallo. During the early stage of proceedings, Guinea also claimed the payment of that of to African Zaire and African Container Zaire in accordance with the principles of state responsibility and civil liability. The Congo. As the respondent argued, the inadmissibility of Guinea's application on two grounds. First of all, Guinea lacked standing to exercise diplomatic protection since essentially it sought to secure reparations for injuries suffered on account of the allegedly violations of rights of the 
two companies not possessing any nationality. Secondly, neither the companies nor Mr. Diallo had exhausted their available and effective local remedies in assisting the Congo. As to the merits, the respondent confessed that it had acted appropriately at all times and that exposure was justified in the Congolese public interest. Thus, the Congo had not committed any international wrongful acts towards Mr. Diallo and the Republic of Guinea. The first trial, which took place in 2007, was related to the preliminary objections brought by the Congo concerning admissibility in 2006. In May 2007, the court held that Guinea's application was admissible insofar as it concerned Mr. Diallo's rights as individual and his rights as an associate in African Zaire and African Container Zaire. Since ICJ assumed the absence of effective local remedies to Mr. Diallo and in its domestic administrative and judicial system, the ICJ completely conceived Guinea's standing with regard to the protection of Mr. Diallo's rights as an individual. The court cited its famous Barcelona traction case in order to reinforce the principle that the infringement of companies' rights does not involve responsibility towards the shareholders, even if their interests are affected. The court analysis focused upon the question whether the treatment of Mr. Diallo was consistent with the Congo's relevant treaty obligations. Before considering whether the court found that the international covenant civil and political rights had been infringed, it may be noted that Guinea initiated interstate proceedings before the court and not the Human Rights Committee that applies the ICCPR. The court concluded that concerning procedural guarantees conferred on aliens by Congolese law and aimed at protecting the persons in question against the risk of arbitrary treatment. The expulsion of Mr. Diallo was not decided in accordance with law. On these grounds, the court concluded that Article 13 of the ICCPR was violated in respect of circumstances in which Mr. Diallo was expelled. The court concluded that Congo has failed to produce a single document or any other form of evidence to prove that Mr. Diallo was notified of the exposure decree at the time of his arrest in 1995 and 1996. This being so, the requirement laid down by Article 9, Paragraph 2 of the Covenant was not complied with on that occasion either. According to Guinea, these provisions were violated when Mr. Diallo was arrested in November 1995 and January 1996 because he was not informed without delay at those times of his rights to seek assistance from the consular authorities of his country. The court finds that there was a violation by the Congo of the Article 36, Paragraph 1b of the Vienna Convention on Consular Relations. Reparation. In the light of circumstances of the case, in particular the fundamental character of the human rights obligation, Bridget and Guinea's claims for reparation in the form of compensation, the court was of the opinion that in addition to a judicial finding of violations, reparations due to Guinea for the injured suffered by Mr. Diallo must take the form of compensation. The amount of compensation to be paid by the Congo was settled by the court in a subsequent phase of the proceeding. Compensation In 2012, the court ordered the payment of compensation of $85 million suffered by Mr. Amadou Diallo as a result of his arbitrary detentions and exposure. For the first time, the 
ICJ has expressly relied on the Inter-American Court of Human Rights case law on majority judgments, and did so with very specific purpose to define applicable standards and consequences, as well to seek guidance and inspiration in the field of human rights litigation on such amounts of compensation. The ICJ has generally avoided open reference to regional human rights tribunals and majority judgments. However, most reference to Inter-American Court of Human Rights case law are found in individual opinions of judges with emphasis to Judge Consado Village. Relevance, as Judge Consado Village points out, this was the first time in its history that the court had decided a case on the basis of an international human rights treaty. The Allo case was essentially a human rights case, but it only reached the court originally because of exercise of diplomatic protection.